Welcome back. I'm Jennifer Maker and this is The Great Maker Show and Tell. Today we are making pretty paper poinsettia flowers. I have three different versions here. I have one made with um, a regular plain cardstock in case you need to make a whole lot of them because it's the most cost effective. A pretty pastel one made with shimmer cardstock and this fabulous one made with glitter and a foil cardstock. Isn't that just the prettiest thing? I love making paper flowers based off of real petal and flower shapes, and this poinsettia is no exception. So the leaves are traced from a real plant, and I've arranged the petals, sorry, the, the leaves, in the classic five-star point pattern that naturally grows on poinsettias. And I'll show you how to do that too. So to make this paper flower, you're going to need some cardstock, glue, I like to use hot glue, and my poinsettia pattern, which is free on my blog at jennifermaker.com. A complete materials list is linked below. Now this is a simple project with big impact, and it can be made by anybody. So let me show you how you can make one of these pretty paper poinsettias today. Now you could get my pattern from my blog, jennifermaker.com, and cut out all of the leaves um, with scissors. Um, that's totally fine but I'm going to use my Cricut because it'll do it faster and more accurately. And they're just like, they'll even score them for me, which is really cool. So to get this, you want to click new project in Cricut design space and then click upload, click upload image, click browse. And then you want to locate the downloaded SVG file, um, which is a giant point set with scores. Okay. And then once that loads, you're going to click save. And it'll come up in your recently uploaded images and click insert image. And when it appears, it looks like this. It's totally fine. It says this is what you want. But there's some preparation to do to get this to work. First, you need to ungroup it like that. Then you need to change each of these cut lines with the red line through them from cut to score. So these layers that you see here that um, should have like a red line through them, those are your score layers. So you need to click on that and click on score for each one of these. And I believe that there are six of these. So you just go through and change that from cut to score, right? Okay, and then when you're done with that, you need to attach each of the score um score layers to the base layer that it goes with. So you just do exactly what I'm doing right here and then it'll be fine. And then that's it. That's all you have to do to prepare this. It's already ready to go and size to your paper. So click make it and it sorts it out um, into a yellow layer, a green layer. And then I believe that there's four red layers. Is that right? Yes, there's four. And that's all you have to do now is click continue and it will cut out for you exactly the way that it's supposed to be. So select your Cricut and then um, click browse all materials and choose the appropriate uh, material. Like I'm using medium cardstock here and I like to change my pressure to more and that's it. Load your paper and start cutting it. Okay, so it's time to assemble all of our cut petals. Now this pretty paper that I use this foil cardstock has a white edge and your paper might have that as well and if you don't like it you can just take a marker and just go right along the edge of your paper using the edge of the marker and it's really quick and easy to do and now it's red right okay so to prepare these petals before we assemble it we want to um, make a cup shape so that the the design has a 3d shape so we just fold over that little um, where it's cut here and glue it down and that creates a, um, a concave shape that looks more like a real petal. So you just a little bit of glue and just hold it down. Don't burn yourself. Be careful. <laughs> hot glue is hot and uh, you go through it and you do this for every single petal. It doesn't really take that long to make. I created two of these um, I've created two of these poinsettias for this tutorial in just about 20 minutes. So it's not, um, it's not bad, especially if you're making a lot of these, you'll get, you'll get into the, the routine of it and you'll get a, you know, a good system down. You can also fold the leaves if you want to make even more of a three dimensional, um, texture, for example. So, and you can just fold along that score line if you scored your, your material, your paper. 
which I did. So right here you can see I've scored it so it's easy to fold and then I can just um, glue it right into place and it looks more realistic, I think. Um, but it's all totally up to you and what you would like to do. So now that we have all of our petals, it's time to put them in the base. Now I cut this out of glitter cardstock, which is we don't want to use the glitter side. We want to use the the plain side. It's going to the glue is going to adhere much better to this. Um, and of course, you can use a totally different base, but this one has markings in it that I put in there intentionally to show you how to create the five point star shape of a real poinsettia. So if you just follow the arrows of each of the um, that's marked on this base, you can put your petals in just the right spot. So that's the idea here. So all you're gonna do is uh, take a little hot glue and put it just at the base of this petal on the back. And then you're gonna set it in your bait onto your base and um, look at where the arrow is and you want it to point towards the bottom of the, the leaf, right? And that's it, you go and you do the first layer of five. So there are five, the, and the, the five at the bottom are always the biggest, just so that's really clear. And then the next layer goes in between the first layer. So we're filling in the empty places as we go around like this. And then there is a third layer of smaller leaves and the same thing, we're just filling in the empty spots in between. And the last layer we're actually going to put right in the center of our base so that it's not showing, right? And there we go. So now um, it's all, uh, all covered and everything and isn't that pretty? <laughs> I love that paper. That is foil cardstock that I got from Michael's. Recollections foil cardstock. Okay, so here uh, is our stamen, and we're just going to put a little dab of hot glue in at the base. Start with the biggest one and then move to the smallest one. And uh, that looks really nice. These are our leaves. I like to put these on afterwards so that I can arrange them where I think that they look the best. Um, and you just put a little hot glue in there and you put them in it between the leaves and the base, right? So the glue is going against the base. And there we go. That was pretty easy, wasn't it? I love paper flowers because they look like they're a whole lot more complicated than they actually are, right? Yeah, so easy, really quite easy, but so pretty. Now, you can vary the size of your poinsettia by either making your leaves a little smaller, like I have done here, um, or bigger, as long as they'll fit on your paper, um, or you can change this arrangement of the leaves on the base. So the further out you go on your base, the larger the diameter of your flower. So this is a simple way to make your flower bigger or smaller without changing the actual size of the petals. And I think these paper poinsettias would make really, really pretty holiday decor and even special gift toppers. Last year I made a version of this poinsettia as a gift topper and I think it turned out really nice. I love this. Now if you want to hang your poinsettia on the wall or even make a photo backdrop, I like to use command strips because they're easy to find and they'll come right off your wall and they totally hold the weight of a paper flower without any issues. Now, if you make a paper poinsettia, please, please, please share your projects and your photos. I love to see the things that you make. Now, tomorrow I'll be showing you how to make glitter ornaments with layered vinyl, like this one. Isn't that cool? So this is all glitter inside and I have experimented with three different popular options and I will give you the results tomorrow of the best way for the best impact on your glitter ornaments. And of course, how also you can layer this vinyl over the curved surface of the ornament. Um, and I'm really excited to show that to you because I think they turned out really cute. And these are very popular these days and a lot of people want to know how to make them. So I think that's it. Don't forget that I need your project ideas. I need to know what you want to make and um, so that I can make it for you. And actually, I am, I am very fortunate. I have currently about 600 project ideas. Of course, there's lots of duplication, so I, I'm only making 600 videos as far as I know. Uh, but still, I want to hear from more, more people because then I know I'm making things that you can actually use and bring you joy. And I think that's it for today. Um, remember, if you can tell me what you want to make, I can show you how to make it. Until tomorrow. Mm -hmm.